If you've just bought a brand new camera or recently gotten into video creation and filmmaking, you may be wondering about the difference between 24 frames per second, 25 frames per second, 50, 60, 120 frames per second, and what the heck is the difference between NTSC and PAL? I'm going to give you the short answers straight up, but then if you would like to nerd out with me, continue watching the rest of the video because we're going to explore the origins of these formats and you can leave this video with a really solid understanding of encoding formats, frame rates, and you can amaze all of your filmmaking friends, or who knows, maybe it'll be a trivia question one day and you will be the one to carry your team through. So without further ado, let's dive in to NTSC versus PAL. First of all, what do these acronyms stand for? NTSC stands for National Television Standards Committee and is named for the group that originally developed black and white and later the colour television system. NTSC is primarily used in North America, parts of South America, Japan and a few other countries. PAL is an abbreviation for Phase Alternate Line and is used everywhere else except for Russia, France, China, Pakistan and a few others which use a third protocol called CCAM which is short for Sequential Colour and Memory. But we're going to focus on NTSC and PAL for this video. So why is this important? Basically, these are all protocols for encoding, transmitting, distributing and broadcasting the pictures we see on our televisions. Of course, it's a little different today with digital video and platforms such as YouTube where we're able to distribute and watch video that's created in any of these formats. But in the earlier days of television, TVs had to interpret signals which were dependent on the hertz frequency of your region. The standard picture frequency for NTSC is 60 Hz and for PAL, 50 Hz. This Hz frequency also dictates the frame rate, which is how many still images or frames appear on the screen every second to make an image look fluid. NTSC format uses 30 frames per second, although this is technically 29.97 frames per second, but we'll get to that in a minute. And PAL is 25 FPS. The frame rate is half that of the Hertz frequency because of a process called interlacing. An interlaced display or interlaced scan video only changes every other row of pixels in the image at each screen refresh or frame. So an image is assembled into a whole picture using two alternating fields of data. If we're looking at PAL, for example, this process is happening 25 times every second. A lot of programs we watch now are displayed in a progressive format, or non-interlaced, which shows the entire image at every refresh. While progressive video gives a higher quality image, it also requires a much higher bandwidth to broadcast, so interlaced video was created to share the highest quality image using less bandwidth. So why might you see NTSC displayed as 29.97? When colour TVs and colour programs first came into play, black and white TVs couldn't read these signals correctly. So a chrominance or colour signal had to be added between the luminance signals that could be ignored by black and white TVs but interpreted by colour television sets. This extra colour signal increased the time it took to deliver each frame by hundredths of a second. But this brought the standard 30 frames per second down to 29.97, but for simplicity, it's still usually referred to as 30 FPS. How important are these formats today? It's good practice to stick to the format of your region. Even though digital signals are the norm these days, there are a couple of reasons why this may affect your video production. For example, house lights flicker at different rates due to the house frequency in different regions. In a PAL region, a standard light bulb actually turns on and off 50 times every second. If you've ever seen a flicker or horizontal lines traveling down your image, this could be because your frame rate or your shutter speed or both are out of sync with the frequency of the lights in the room. For standard filming, you want your shutter speed to be double your frame rate, or you may look at it as matching the shutter speed to your region's hertz frequency. If you want to go deeper on that and see what happens when you mess around with the shutter speed settings, check out this video. 
when it comes to shooting at a higher frame rate for the purpose of slow motion, you might notice on most cameras that in PAL mode, you can only shoot up to 100 frames per second, but in NTSC, you can shoot at 120 FPS. This is because these frame rates are multiples of the format's base frame rate. The frame rate options in PAL will all be multiples of 25, and for NTSC, multiples of 30. These days, most editing software does a great job at mixing frame rates, but it's a good practice to stick to the standard in your region to keep out of any trouble. A quick history lesson. And where did 24 FPS come from? One thing we haven't addressed is where 24 frames per second in the NTSC format fits into all of this. 30 FPS comes from the early days of broadcast television. 24 FPS comes from the early days of cinema. 24 frames per second is believed to be the lowest possible frame rate that makes movement natural to the human eye. The original frame rate for film, which was standardised in 1917, was actually 16 frames per second, but in those days they measured it in feet per minute, so the standard was 60 feet per minute. Films were shot at 60 feet per minute, but they were often shown in theatres at 80 feet per minute. That's why when we see a lot of black and white films from the very early days, they appear sped up. One reason is because they've been converted to 24 frames per second, but they were originally shown in some film houses at close to that speed anyway. In fact, in some of the smaller film houses where they wanted to fit more shows in a day, they would play the film at up to 100 feet per minute. This wasn't a big issue until audio came in. Audio had to be played at a fixed speed so it wasn't distorted. So when it came to deciding what fixed speed to standardise the tracks for audio, they came to a compromise between 80 and 100 and settled on 90 feet per minute, which translates to 24 frames per second. And that's where it all began. I hope you've enjoyed today's history lesson and you can confidently go out into the world of video production armed with all of this new knowledge. Hit that subscribe button for more video tips, techniques and some fun trivia thrown in there too. Check out these videos and let me know in the comments what you'd like to see a video about next. I'll see you next time.